When it comes to woodworking, the good news is that ordinary yellow carpenter's glue is going to handle just about all of your projects. So that's it for choosing glue. All right, well, drive safe, everyone. Thanks for watching. Not so fast. There's more to the story, and you got to know that story in order to do your best work. Mike's right. There are a lot of useful glues out there for woodworking, and we're going to help you put together a survival kit. Let's start at the beginning with ordinary yellow glue. It's the stuff you can find just about anywhere, and it's great for about 80% of your woodworking projects. The truth is, all glues recommended for wood, almost anything you'll find out there, if used properly, are actually stronger than the wood itself. Check out this little cutoff from two boards that were joined together. Watch what happens when I break it. So you see the wood broke and not the glue joint. And that would be the same for all woodworking glues, whether it's polyurethane or various types of yellow glue or even the animal glues like hide glue. But not every glue is suited for woodworking. Hot melt glue, for example, you wouldn't want to use your craft gun to glue up your woodworking projects. The same thing goes for contact cement. That's that stuff they use to lay down countertop laminates. You don't want to use that for woodworking joints or even woodworking veneering. But it's nice to have a spray can of that stuff lying around because it comes in handy for all those little odd jobs like you want to stick sandpaper down onto a flat surface to flatten the backs of your chisels or maybe you want to stick sandpaper to the bottom of a fence so it doesn't budge and move on you. Do it all the time. But back to yellow glue, here's what you need to know. It's a great blend of some great qualities. It's cheap, it's strong, and it dries pretty quick, about 60 minutes or so. So leave those clamps on at least that long. But watch out. It starts to stiffen up a lot quicker than that. Right. That's called its working time. And for this kind of ordinary yellow glue, it's only about 10 minutes. So you really want to move quick once you spread the glue. And that's why you want to do a dry fit before every glue up. That'll tell you that every single part is going to come together perfectly once the glue is spread and the clock is ticking. Yep, and to make things even easier on yourself, here's a tip. On big glue ups, try to break it up into smaller sub-assemblies. Like on this table, instead of gluing all the aprons and legs up together, glue up just a pair of legs to an apron, repeat that, then glue everything up together. It's going to take a lot of stress out of a stressful situation. Now here's one last great thing about ordinary yellow glue. It leaves a translucent glue line, which is basically invisible. Yeah, good stuff, but what if I need more than 10 minutes to get through my glue ups? Like on this workbench top, lots of boards, lots of glue surface. For that, we're going to need to turn to another glue. One option is a waterproof yellow glue like Type On 3. It's great for cutting boards, outdoor furniture, anything that's going to see a lot of moisture and it has 20 to 25 minutes of working time. That gives you a lot more time to get your project together. And that's a big deal. That is a big deal. It's got a couple small downsides. One is that it'll cost you a few more dollars at the home center, and the other that on lighter woods, it might not be the best choice, like maple or pine. You'll see a tan glue line on those types of woods. But if you want to look a little harder, or shop online, you can find yellow glues that dry translucent and still have that longer working time. They'll be marketed that way, saying extend or something like that. That'd be great for a big maple glue up like this bench top, a light colored wood. Absolutely. One last point about glues. If you're working in a cold environment, check the specs carefully. Some glues handle the cold better than others. Regular glue will get you down to about 50 degrees. Type on 3, 45, extend down to 40. That said, do you want to be working in a 40 degree shop? Heat your shop. Now let's talk about those times when yellow glues are just not the right choice at all. Like when you have to fill gaps. Right. Yellow glue needs a really tight joint. So if you do have any gaps in your furniture or anything. I don't, but go on. I understand that. But if you do, like a mortise and tenon joint with a little too much wiggle, most glues aren't going to be able to handle that. Epoxy can. That's why I like to keep some five minute epoxy around for that occasional loose joint. Again, I never need epoxy, but if I did, I believe that I would prefer this type of applicator. It squeezes out equal parts of both parts of this two part glue, and then you just mix it up, and that lets it catalyze and begin to start setting up and working, and then you just slop it on. You do that very well for never having done that before. First time. You know, epoxy is also great for getting out of other jams as well. You can mix it with sawdust for knot holes or even the occasional gappy dovetail. Yeah, again, I'm unfamiliar with that term. But. I understand. 
Here's another life preserver that you'll need. CA glue, cyanoacrylate, super glue. Mike, remember those commercials with Guy hanging off the beam? Remember that, Mike? Why don't you come on down from there, Francis? Let me tell you how cool CA glue really is. I like CA glue. It's a real lifesaver when I'm working on a piece and I blow out a corner and I need a fast, invisible repair. I like medium viscosity stuff and I pair it with an activator which dries it instantly. I wick it into the joint just a little bit and hold it closed while I spray on the activator. Once it foams up, it's dry. I can smooth it off, get back to woodworking. The accelerator is great for pieces that you can't clamp. But when you can clamp it, like this board with a check in the end, you just squirt it in the crack and then you can clamp it. It'll sort of just wick its way in there. And then clamp. The crack will come together and it'll be almost an invisible repair. Well, that's basically it. It's a great survival kit for glue ops. You got your yellow glues for the bulk of woodworking, a couple specialty glues to get you out of some tough situations, and a can of this contact cement to stick sandpaper onto things. So you'll never get stuck again. Get it, Mike? Got it.